Welcome to the World Builders Anvil, episode 229, the grand finale of Marcus and the Jewels of Div <coughs> Don't know where to start building your fantasy world? Do you need more? Does it make sense? Forget any worries and become a crafter of imagination. This is the place where we will prime your mind. Now, it's time to heat up the forge, break out the mithril ingots and hammer. Welcome to the World Builders Anvil. I'm Jeffrey W. Ingram. And I'm Michael Miller. Let's sup from the muck of Java and build. Welcome back. As always, I'm Jeffrey W. Ingram. And funkily yours, I am Michael Miller. Ooh, funkily. That's Fun- always a good thing. Well, I figure this is our final installment of uh, the Div Divarian Jewel Snatching Thieves of Marky Marcus Funky Bunches. That's right. <laughs> the Funky bunk- Bunch uh, Wild Bunch Gang. The Funky Wild Bunch Gang. Um, it was kind of funny because uh, Jeff sent me the email that. Let me. I'm minimizing this. So I'm going to pull up the email. You sent me an email, and I was earlier today like, oh, I got to double check which. Uh, show which shows we're going to try to record today. Um, we're actually recording on a special day today. Normally we don't record um, on a Monday, but it is a holiday so in the United States today, so we are recording on a Monday because I wasn't available to record the other day. Um, and I had forgotten that we were going to be doing this uh, episode, <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, we should we should probably close this down. And It's been going on for like a year? <laughs> it literally... It has it not quite a year, no? Wasn't it more like the fall? I think it was later in the summer we started. I'm trying to... Well, hang on. I'm trying to find the email that you sent that has... Because it's funny because I, I forget what I was looking in. I was looking it up before you sent this email to me like a couple of weeks ago. And then you sent an email that had all of the the the, the, the recap episode list, which I'm pulling up right now. And it was... You wrote, you included Pathways of Doom, which was episode 187. We're now at 229. Yes, yeah, so 187 was, I think, where we sort of maybe talked about. I'm not sure why I include. I, maybe, I think, is that, is that, was that, was that a build for? I think it was a build for this. Yeah. That's true because we, for like the first several episodes, we had an episode and a build episode, an episode and a build episode. So, um, so if you guys haven't been paying attention, the, the whole thing includes episodes 187, 193, 194, 199, 200, 209, 210, and 220. Hmm. And um, yeah, so 40 episodes ago. <laughs> We started this, and and I love doing these. I love uh, doing episodes where we get to play in Jeff's world, and it get, it's kind of fun to to explore things. It gives Jeff a chance to do things that, like when he's because we we do it as a fun thing for us, but Jeff's also doing it as a way to figure things out for his world for mm-hmm. future books and future stories and. You know, exercising with characters and places and what have you. So there's mm-hmm. a, there's a practical reason for doing it too, and we just really hope that everybody enjoys the the story episodes as well. I feel that our that these are not quite as good as some of the tabletop sessions that we used to do. No. But but I think it's only because it's only you and me, and those sessions was were usually like six people deep. So. Well, and, 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 and you know the thing is, you know, I think in this kind of scenario, you're 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 focused more on trying to push the story along rather than enjoying moments mm. uh, that yeah, you naturally definitely. would. Uh, so that's definitely the flaw of doing it this way. Um, but um, I mean, it, it's fun in a different way. You kind of know what's going on, and you there are some surprises for you. Mm. But I think that kind of, in a way, from your perspective, you know, sort of probably would take away from it. So, well, I mean, I don't mind it per se. It, it, based on the format, it lends itself to a different t- type of play. Like you have to do it differently. Like we get to go from big set piece to big set piece, as opposed to doing a lot of more nit, gr- nit you know, nitpicky, granular stuff that you would otherwise do in a. Um, in a, a larger, slower campaign where you can just sit around and take your time. Yes, most definitely. Let's see. Uh, do you want to uh, do a little recap on what's going on? Because I, I can't remember where we actually ended. Okay. Uh, I know. Let's see. Well, you you, you, you do it. I, like, I will add in details. So essentially, uh, 
the story picked up, you know, uh, with uh, Marcus learning of uh, the appearance of the jewels of Div Divar. Even though I don't think in the story you've ever learned their name. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't think that. I think that's. Um, I think that's true. <laughs> and uh, you, you notice in there that. Um, uh, my, my brain's a little little fuzzy there. So what you notice in there is um, um, you went to case it out with, with uh, Gregor mm -hmm. and uh, essentially uh, 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 saw that the person who has possession of these jewels is a wealthy merchant, uh, a foreigner who came to town, took residence, and there's an old uh, castle sort of near the center of town that is no longer being used by the nobility but has rented it out, has the two... Uh, these jewels up in a tall tower within w within the small little keep and um and heavily guarded with magic and personnel and uh which only made them more tempting uh you've witnessed the demise of a very talented young duo of people who uh went in to um to steal them so you went around and you started acquiring a team uh to help you with it uh you've uh, worked with father um, who is a local crime, uh, the closest thing they have to a crime lord in town, probably. And um, a Shiftarian um, merchant lady uh, of the noblest kind, uh, because, of course, she'd be called father. And um, so you got her support to help financially back it, which got you access to someone to create a magic item, which is about to become very important. Um uh, to help you break into the case, which you've learned is guarded by spirits. You've come across your friend, Am, who's a specialist on the extraction of people from hot areas. Um, and uh, she's a sort of a, a kind-hearted criminal who is dreadfully opposed to the prince of uh, the principality you're in, which is kind of inconvenient to be opposed to the prince who rules the principality uh, when you live within that principality. But... Um, um, which is probably largely why she's helping. She's more of a criminal by rebellion than criminal by uh, desire, unlike some other characters in this story. And um, <laughs> <laughs> then um, you, you guys also got an inside man, sort of in a roundabout way, uh, because he hates Michael's partner, Greg. Er. And... Um, <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> and, uh, that's an inside joke. <laughs> and uh, so this criminal um, um, was basically lured in when he thought Michael's character was betrayed by the other character to help still steal the jewels, which kind of puts Michael into a unique position of being inside of all of the defenses, getting the jewel, and then has to get a way out, uh, which could be the more difficult part. Um, I believe I, I, I've i made it up into the chamber. I don't believe I've secured the jewels yet. You've I think not that's secured where, the that's jewels. Where, I remember where we, left, where we off. left off was you took the bone key, <clears throat> you, so you had the bone in hand, um, and, and were ready to enter the um, uh, actual case holding the jewels, which are conveniently not displayed. You think it would be a nice glass case, but it is not. I thought um, part of them were displayed. Is that am I uh, part of them? You you saw you saw them as it was opened up, not through the display. Or I could be misremembering that. In which case, it is uh, at least partially displayed. We'll say we'll say it's partially displayed because it's been a year and I've kind of forgotten and I don't have my notes in front of me <laughs> because I'm I'm trying to wrap it up here. So. Okay, now do I have? Uh, did our inside man smuggle the um, the bone, or do I have that? He he sm he smuggled the bone to you. That's what I thought. And you you made your way up literally to the case, and we're getting ready to open it up, uh, hoping the bone would work, because um, essentially the bone acts as a skeleton key, allowing Michael to pick the lock with it if he's skilled enough. Which it, would be really funny if he fails. I'm <laughs> so glad that you said that because I thought I needed to snap it. Hmm? You need to snap it, but then you use it as a lockpick. Okay. I'm glad you're mm -hmm. telling me that because I did not remember that detail at all. And there's the whole ritual, and you have to remember the words. And if you don't remember the words, bad things could happen. Wait, that's I'm mixing up stories. I was about that. to say, did you do that? I don't remember that part. <laughs> I mean, I'll take it. It'll be fun. I'll, I think I, I've got some words I can use. <laughs> 
Sorry, a little my 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 my, my daily uh, ash flashback. So quite all right. All right. So now, if my memory serves me, what didn't I uh, prep my escape? A little, or can I? I'd yes. like to do that, like like gather. So some essentially, rope uh, part of it was some. I'm calling it cable, but not really. Uh, th- there was some stuff that could be used as cabling to scale down the outside of the tower uh, when you're done. There should be a form of a uh, distraction if Gregor's still on board, and you think he is. Uh, you're, yeah, you're about ninety percent positive, but yeah, we got like a signal from him. From he was in the the watchtower across the way in the, in the church. Mm-hmm. And if if you guys uh, don't remember from the prior episode, um, it, Marcus was was a little unsure if he had actually been double crossed, but then he realized that. Gregor was using the rad maneuver. It, that harkens back to an even older episode of mm-hmm. their adventures. The that, very first. The, was that in the very first one? That was the very first you were playing the game and you used the rad maneuver. Where they cheated somebody else using that maneuver. So mm. very, very cool and fun things. <laughs> and, and yeah, and there was a signaling where he was, you believe it was him trying to flash a light through mm-hmm. Uh, where he was at towards you. Um, But you couldn't be absolutely sure. But you're pretty sure. So you think from here it should go back more to the original plan. Okay. So he's going to cross his fingers, snap the bone. Let's see what Mm. happens. Okay, you snap the bone. You notice nothing. (laughs) Lovely. No magical light, no mist. No you mist, just, no magical just light. Just snapped bone in my hands. Um, you do kind of, you, you get like a little stack of electricity when you do it, but that's that's about it. You right. were kind of expecting more of a show, but uh, <laughs> certainly hoping. If it worked, it didn't really give you a show. Fair enough. Uh, let's um, let's try picking the picking the lock. Okay, really your lock picking skill. I'm going to roll critical it. failure. I've done it before. Uh, actually, not bad. I rolled a nine. Okay. No, I rolled a ten. Rolled a ten. Okay. So it, it it takes you several moments, but you kind of work around, and when you start feeling all, out the latches, and then finally, a nice little twist. Luckily, in this time period, locks aren't that complicated. Be glad it's not a gnomish lock. Well, the the good thing is is that it's not uh, immediately killing me on the attempt. Because that's that was the concern that I would yes. just get killed immediately. Mm-hmm. But no, yeah, that's right. Nothing appears to happen. You hear it click, um, but nothing has happened at this point. And your brain sort of races back to that moment where the people were at the pedestal, and you're not sh- sure if it was when he opened the pedestal or when he tried to unlock it. I'll leave that up to you. Whether or not you can remember that. Uh, I'll say I, I imagine that that would have been a pretty impressionable moment, um, but it also happened quickly, and he might not have known what he was looking for. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'll tell you what I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll one die, one to three. He knows he remembers which action did it. Four, four, five, or six. He does not. Roll to one. He knows exactly what caused it. So was it the actual opening or? It was upon the opening. Okay, so cross crosses cross his fingers, and uh, here we go. Okay, roll your alertness, which is something typically I don't allow players to roll, so it's usually just more of a dramatical <laughs> thing for people. <laughs> uh, critical failure. I rolled a 17. Okay. 17 out of a possible 18 being the worst, and that in a GURP system is a critical failure. So this should be interesting, folks. Yeah, uh, you open it up and you do not see anything inside. Of it. Looks clear. <laughs> how's it look? Looks clear. I thought you said it was clear. I said it looked clear. Well, how's it how's look it now? Look now? It, it looks, looks clear. clear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that bit. <laughs> mm. I don't even remember what movie that's from. I pitch, just remember pit, that. Pitch black. Pitch black. Okay. All right. So what happens? 
So oh, I, so he's lifting open. It's a pedestal, and it's got a hinged top. Mm-hmm. A hinged and, top. And I'm lifting it open. You lift it open, and you do not see anything within the box. Oh, there's nothing there. You swore it was there a second ago. Uh, is there a is there a hidden bottom? Is there a like feel around? Is it a does it does it hollow? Okay, as you feel around, there is there is definitely uh, um, an edge hmm. for the bottom. So it's like you can kind of feel like just a little bit of space around around the bottom. Okay. So, can I use my my thievery skills and try to work this out? Yes. Go ahead and try me to, me to roll to, something. You, you try and roll three dice and tell me what you get. Uh, eleven. Eleven. So after some fidgeting, you actually find where there's actually a release, mm-hmm. and and when you push on it, it kind of swivels, mm-hmm. and you notice it looks like it must have like swallowed the gems when you unlocked it. Mm-hmm. Something about the unlocking process must have triggered an internal defense to I was hide say, the gems within. This guy is smart enough to not only have big bad magical defense, but also some old fashioned, uh, you know, mechanical uh, defense as well. Mm. Okay, so you you kind of slide it open and you can look down and see the jewels within there. Uh, yeah. Make sure there isn't anything that's going to cut my hand off if I try to retrieve it. Like, look to see if is there anything that I could grab my hand or any kind of trap or whatever. Looks clear. Looks clear. I'm going to roll. <laughs> uh, ten. Looks clear. Uh, proceed with caution. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So I, as you reach down inside, you know, you, you feel and start bringing out these very large gems. They, like I said, you know, it looks like a, a setting for crown jewels. Hmm. Um, well, one, it, there is, there's a crown. There and is there's, a crown, right? Yeah. There is a crown. And then there's another thing that looks like it would maybe be a giant gem for the top of a scepter. And, um, and as you're picking them out, you find there's also a book in there. As well, which is interesting. What's the book? You don't know. Can I read? Do you, you pull it out? Um. Well, can well, first of all, can he read? You cannot read, but you could probably get someone to do it. Okay. Um. I mean, how valuable would a book be to him? I, you I have mean, no idea. Some books are really valuable because there aren't a lot of books. My thought is because it's in there with these jewels, it's probably it it's probably valuable. Okay. And since he's greedy, <laughs> I think I've got room in the bag for this too. So, all right, I'm pretty great. sure you could fit it in. Yeah, let's fit it in. Let's let's take okay. let's take it all. Okay. As, as you lift up the book and the jewels, you hear a, a little, a tiny little click sound. Uh, Roll your dodge. Seven. Seven. So that's <laughs> that's a good roll. That's a very good roll. Um. Not quite good enough. You feel what? a tiny, a tiny prick, into your arm. Oh no! Well, like a syringe sort of thing. Like I've just been sort, poisoned. Sort, yeah, there's definitely it feels like liquidy, uh, uh, a little burning no. as it touches. Roll your health. Uh, okay. I don't know. What we decided about health. Uh, pretty good. I rolled a nine. Okay, you kind of feel just like a twinge of like nausea. Mm. Woozy Maybe at all? A, a little cloudy eyes, but oh, but not horrible. Um, yet. hmm. It, it cloudy. So do do I feel like I'm gonna pass out? Like this yeah, is- it's, it's it's almost more like in, initially you feel a little nauseous, but then you kind of feel a bit tired, and your eyes kind of you know how they get cloudy when you get sleepy. It was kind of like that, but it, it it's kind of holding it cloudy. Um. A bit of exhaustion, but not like overwhelmed. Let's let's do this. Um, if you get your adrenaline going, and not that I'm thinking he n- understands the concept of adrenaline, but you know, if you get yourself like he's like, I'm trying to think if he would cut himself or maybe just does he have any poison skills? <sighs> 
trying to think if we. I, I don't think that it would be fair to say that he he probably he, not. He okay, does so make a roll. But he's aware yeah. of poison. With, I mean, with this would be a thief spy kind of thing. So it's, it's not unusual. He, he's maybe heard something. So I'll give him a chance. Uh, eleven. Yeah, mm-hmm. nothing's coming to mind. Okay, so you're pretty sure you've been poisoned. Uh, you, my thought, pro- my th- the, your thought is probably got there as quickly as possible. Well, the thing because- that, the thing that's funny is this is his thought process. Uh, like I should probably get myself, you know, awake and excited. Which, mm-hmm. if you're poisoned, that's exactly the opposite. Of, well, you want to be calm so that it doesn't spread through your system real fast. Mm-hmm. And now he's like, "Oh, I have to hurry before it hurts me," which is going to raise his blood, his, <laughs> his, 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 um, mm-hmm. uh, his pulse. It is going to raise his pulse if he starts running around. But that's mm-hmm. kind of like he wants to get out of here quickly so that he can get whatever help necessary. Yeah. Well, probably his thought is he knows that if he if he follows the plan, gets down over the wall, there should be a wagon with Am and Gregor right there. Right. All right, so let's. Uh, and you haven't heard any disturbance yet, but you know that something's supposed to be going on. So, like, there's supposed to, like I'm waiting for a signal before I get to. Well, actually, no. You you did get the signal last time. It was a, a fire started. That's yeah. That's what I was going to say. Right. I'm sorry. That's I, okay. I, so okay. Well, uh, so pack everything into one of those one of those bags because we we there were like you know sacks. You know, mm-hmm. tie it tie it off with a piece of rope. Make a makeshift like throw like. So that it's like a carrier bag, you know, like just mm-hmm. so that it's just the bag and a piece of rope so I can throw it over my shoulder and wear it like a sash. Mm-hmm. And let's let's throw the the rope I've tied off. Let's uh, let's get out of here. Let's try to get to the mm-hmm. wall. I mean, let's so, take take a quick look around first. Make sure no one's paying attention to what I'm doing. You go outside. Uh, most of the people inside of here ha- have shifted over. The fire is kind of a little out of control. Um that's right, because I remember it was a fire, too. Or yeah, a lot of fires we've yeah. been doing. <laughs> and so it, the house itself is kind of caught fire, which you're not, remember, like the house is also inside of there, but it's mm-hmm. separate from the tower. Right. That has actually started to catch fire. Most of the guards are all, actually all of the guards that you, you notice in your quick look around appear to be over fi- fighting the fire along with staff from inside of the house. <coughs> okay make sure I got a moment and it, it, am I just like lowering myself to the wall or am I throwing it over the wall and lowering myself down over the wall? The easier thing to do would be to lower it to the wall. Uh-huh. Um, and it's a little bit less of, if there's an issue, a little bit, a little bit less of a, a drop, you save about 10 feet. Okay. Um, but you're also like 30 feet up. So, you know, it would probably hurt if you fell. Um, well, my point is, do, do I have enough rope to, to then go hand over hand over the wall once I land on top of it, or no? Like I would have at that point, I have to jump down. You, to the you wagon to jump, the but that's only there. that's like if if you hang from the wall, it's about ten feet. Oh, okay, you know. all right. So I mean, you'd be a little bit higher because obviously the wall has a little wall, right, right, right. above where you walk from. Right. But I mean, that that is a relatively safe jump. Okay, all right. So I'm I'll you want me to roll my climbing. Roll your climbing. I rolled a four. I'm a ninja. So you 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 have it tied around your waist, and you are running down the wall. Hmm. Uh, roll your health. <laughs> uh, fifth, no, uh, fourteen. Ouch. Okay. <laughs> You're getting tired. <laughs> uh, yes. All these acrobatics are not helping. <laughs> you sort of slam into the base or to the top of the wall. Hmm. Uh, I come down a little too fast. You come down too fast. Okay. And which in a way is good because you got down quickly, but it's bad because you don't stop really well Mm -hmm. until you hit it. (laughs) And and, and you take four points of damage. Ouch. um, You know, just because you're going way too fast. It's like you you couldn't slow yourself down the way you should have been able to under a normal circumstance. Fair enough. Um, So you descended really quickly, but you couldn't slow yourself down because you're you're just too tired and you just kind of smack into it. Yeah. Roll your health again. Health checks. Uh, 11. Okay. So you don't pass out, but you're feeling really tired. All right. Uh, take a moment. Take a breath. You know, kind of crawl my way over to the the lip. Mm-hmm. 
and just breathe for a second and make sure no one look around, make sure no one notices me. Just take a second to gather myself and mm-hmm. then I'm going to look to make sure I can, you know, see the wagon. Uh, you do see the wagon. It's kind of down an alley a little bit. You can see uh, Gregor uh, kind of stand up looking back at you. Mm-hmm. Um appears to be in the wagon along with the Teamsters. But they're not they're not close to where I'm at. Hmm? Not I mean like over a block away. It's Ugh. like well, any closer it might be suspicious, you would think. Oh, crap. So I gotta try to get from A to B. Like I'm not I was Well, you're you're also being watched at this point too. So I mean By who? You're, Who's watching me now? Gregor. Gregor is looking at you. Oh. And you hear a guard over there go, Hey, who's on the wall? Over the edge. <laughs> over the edge. Got no time for this. Uh, oh, that would have been a really good roll. It was. It's an okay roll. It's. Uh, I rolled an eleven, but it was going to be a nine, and then the die turned. It went from three, uh, the, the, three that. To that was to. That's uh, that's just to get myself to over. over and hang, and mm-hmm. I want to kind of push myself off and just drop. Roll down. your health again. Yeah, I want to, and probably Dex. Uh, health. Ooh, twelve. Uh, a really good Dex roll though. Rolled a seven. So oh, okay, you sort of feel your hand kind of holding on pretty well as your vision kind of goes to black. Lovely. <laughs> so, <laughs> do I pass out and just fall? <laughs> you you pass out and fall. Okay, uh, but you were in the best possible position when when you got there. Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks to your dex roll. Okay, so you wake up. You you feel like you've taken. Two more points of damage. All right, so I'm I'm a hurt hurting puppy right now. You're a hurting puppy right now. Uh, you're in the wagon. Um, Gregor is actually administering almost like a smelling salts type of thing, something a very repugnant odor. Where did um I get poked in the side, in the arm, in the hand? The, hmm? po- the where did the fo- the poison I got poked somewhere? So where did I get poked? It it, it was in the arm, right above the hand. Okay. So if if I come to, to like pull my sleeve up and and just point poison. Okay, you do that. Roll your health again. Uh, thirteen. Hmm. Thirteen. Okay, and then you sort of black out again. Great. <laughs> so at least we know where the line is. the The line <laughs> seems to be about eleven, ten, or eleven or less. <laughs> well, at this point, the difficulty is higher. Than well, of the, course, of course, of course, the difficulty. I understand. <laughs> okay, you you sleep f- for what feels like seconds, mm-hmm. and you wake back up. You are in the city. Um, oh, that's no good. Yes, uh, you are actually not in the carriage at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, you you are um, you're not even sure where you're at. Uh, Bruno is there. Uh, the Teamsters are there, um, and um, everyone but your inside man. Okay. F- father's here? Not father, no. Okay. But the Teamsters are here, so okay. yes, father is here. Yes, so yeah, father's here. <laughs> father's, the, the hand of father is here. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'm just coming to, so I'll, I'll, I'm allowing the situation to occur at this point. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he doesn't, he's confused. Yeah, so you, you kind of wake up. Bruno is over top of you. Mm. He's like, I, you're going to be sore for a while, but we think the poison's out of your system. How do I feel physically? Do I feel like well-rested? Am I sore? Do, do... You feel like you've fallen about 30 feet. Okay. Not quite. But <laughs> I, I'm, I'm banged up. You, you feel sore. I would say at this point you've probably uh, got about – You've recovered four of the health points. Mm-hmm. All right. We had to stop. We could not move you. Where Where are we? Hmm? Where are we? Uh, I don't know. Where is this? You, and uh, Gregor's like, we're in someone's basement. We're in a cellar. We're still in the city? Yes. We couldn't get you out. We didn't know if you would die. Well... <laughs> if we don't get out of this city, we're gonna die. <laughs> we 
Yeah. We got a plan to get out. <laughs> okay. It's only been a couple hours. Okay. Okay. Even though it's try, like I, I try to stand. Now, mm-hmm. I'm not even going to roll it. He tries to stand. He gets woozy. Little tunnel vision starts. Mm-hmm. And he, like, f- slumps and doesn't quite get, make it to his feet. Yep. So he says there, he's like, but the good news is the worst should be over. Um, you, you see, actually, uh, Alm is reading the, the I was book. I just going to ask Bruno, because Bruno would know. Bruno can read. You're pretty sure. He can write. Well, you're right. Um, he, well, my thought is big magic spell protecting the jewels, and the book was with the jewels. My thought is it's a magic book. I mean, he's jumping to conclusions. It, From it, the look on your face, as she's like paging through it, um, her face goes completely ashen. <laughs> Bruno, um, what, what is it? What is that thing? It, it, it appears to be a ledger. Really? It's uh, what's the dude's name? Zar. Uh, Hang on, I got it right here. Xanatos. Xanatos. It's Xanatos's like dirty bookings. Yes. Apparently he's bribing people in town. Hmm. And apparently some of these people I've never heard of, but from other towns he stopped in as well, too. Why did you just get that look on your face? Um, the the language of court is Askiri, and you know what the term is. It is a group of a powerful nation off to the east, um, who um, don't necessarily directly border uh, uh, the kingdom at this point. I think this might be a good time to interrupt the tale for a moment and mm-hmm. give a brief explanation of who the Askari are for the listeners. Those, yes. those of you that have been listening for a while w- will recognize the name. We've talked about them before, but they're very significant in Jeff's world. This is a group of people who who are um, very powerful magically. They're ruled by the Council of 100 and 1,000 mages. And... Um, they have a very expansive empire, which is currently growing in this direction. And, um, and the language here, um, it, it's it, significant that this person is at least somehow connect, connected enough to the Ascari to know their language. Um, the bad news is well, neither, well, how, no one here knows how to read. Well, that's what I was about to say. How would she, she – so she just recognized, hey, this is Ascari, but she doesn't – Yes. She has she no idea what it, it says. It. But she can tell it's a ledger, but just which, the, mean, but, which means there are people being paid off, she thinks. Uh, that is a presumption um, in the area. She does not know who. Um, my thought is that Marcus's bit was – to take this stuff, try to um, leave the city with all of it. Like he wanted to try to screw everybody over because he's greedy. Mm-hmm. I don't, you know, he. there's no chance of him doing that. He realizes because he's not physically able and they're with all of the mm-hmm. people. Every, everybody's right here and they're not going to let their cut leave their sight. Not not with not, not, now. not with two thieves. Not, I know me and Gregor, we're going to go for a walk, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We're going for a walk, trying to figure out what to do next. Yeah, no. So, so he he's abandoning that possibility. But this book presents an opportunity, a, a, a more a lawful character would want to bring it to the prince, um, or 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 warn the appropriate bodies. Marcus doesn't really care about that. He's trying to think how he can make a buck on it. Roll your streetwise snobbledy snook. Well, my thought, even without rolling this, my thought is, would selling it to father be, be? oh, wow, that was a bad roll. So 11, 12, 13, 14. Wait, is that right? Am I counting correctly? Yes, 14, which is not a very good roll. It's not a critical failure, but it is pretty bad. You think the best way to do this is to figure out who's in that book and if it really is like... A, a ledger of spies and then try and blackmail them. 
Um, so that's the idea coming to your head from your role. I, I don't think that that's fair because he's not stupid. <laughs> but no, I mean, it's plausible. People aren't going to want to do it. Obviously, you might not have the courage to do everyone. Well, I know, but uh, like my, like I said, his initial before I said before I even rolled, his idea is to make a buck on it. But he doesn't necessarily want to do good by it. So actually what you are saying does kind of fit that train of thought. Mm-hmm. But he he's also more concerned about the fact that he is wanted now. Like, th- people may not know he, that he did it. I mean, Xanatos probably has a pretty... Xanatos Zan- probably Xanatos pro- is probably assuming that it's... Well, and, and well actually, you, well, you, I, you can't, I was locked you up can't in the tower. dump ta- the book at this point. I was locked because... up in the tower. So they know, they, they must assume, okay, I got out and took the stuff and split. So... You will be the assumed criminal. Right. So uh, I have to And he to get already out assumed you were there to steal from him. Right. So I, I have to get out of here. I cannot I cannot hang around to blackmail spies. Like mm. that that's definitely not first priority is saving. Oh, I'm not saying you would do that first. Right. But because you, you still don't know exactly who the people are. Right. Um should look at I mean, the plan is for Gregor and I to leave the city. Like, right? Right? Gregor's planning on leaving the city with me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Do you want to take this with us? Pointing to the book. Uh, we have to. Do you want to sell it to anyone? To... I mean, I think Father could probably take advantage of this. Take advantage of it better than we could. Fair enough. A little bonus for Father. No, I mean, you know. Yeah, I was going to say no, because I'm hoping that I well, can be well. like, instead of the, your cut, would you like this? <laughs> because a smart enough person, depending on what's in that ledger, might be able to make a lot more on the ledger mm-hmm. than on the jewels. Yes. I don't know how valuable the information but is. But if she can't read Ascari, she's not going to know the exact value of it. True. Probably wouldn't completely take that kind of risk. Well, anyway. Not for her cut. Fair enough. Those are big jewels. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Well, you know that's what we that's what we were gonna try. Um, mm-hmm. It seems to me that our, if if the te- are the team Am um, is getting us out of the city, right? We're just get hopping in. We're gonna um, um, is um, is gonna out smuggle of the city. us out. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then, why don't the we teamsters t- are supposed to go with you until uh, Father has? Well, why don't her we share. why don't we just divvy up now and and beat feet? Uh, can you cut gems? Well, I thought there was, like, gold and shit, too. I, I'm, there isn't enough here that we can literally, physically just be like, you take the, these, you take these. It's not like that. Like, we have it. We have to go another step. Well, okay. The team's just like, we'll take the big... <laughs> we'll, we'll take the big gem, and you can have the crown, and we'll call it even. Oh, it's literally one gem. Oh, there's, like, yeah, the gem on top for, like, those that should go on top of a scepter is, like... One big gem. Oh, I see. Okay. And they're offering to take that. <laughs> no. <laughs> and the ledger. <laughs> no. No, no. And no, they'll no. be gone. No, that is not that is not what we agreed upon. That's not those are not equal percentages. Uh so yeah. And that's the best we can do under these circumstances. I understand. Until we can get let's a cut. let's find a cutter. <laughs> uh. See, I, I previously thought that there was like I was thinking like there was some kind of like necklace thing and a crown and the scepter jewel. Like, in, well, yeah. well, whether there is that thing too, but the problem is you have a big honking gym this big. Right. Everyone wants that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. And so at this point, you're not, Bruno probably won't leave your site until he gets his share because yeah. uh, he's seen the amount and he wants it. Yeah. Um, will, but you need her connection. To, to, to be able to take care of this in Lubble, which is where you guys were planning to go by boat. So who can... Smuggle out of here and get onto a boat. So who can we... How can we move this stuff to somebody that we can trust to cut it and keep it a secret? In town? There ain't no one at this point. So this is a road show at this point. This is what... You gotta get out of town. All right. Well, then well, we're then we're going on a road trip. What's the next biggest city that we could go to? Um, well, there are several, um, but the plan had been to go to Lubble and to get it fenced there. Okay. Let's stick with that then. And then if you do that, then you don't have to worry about cutting it. Well, the fence well, will buy it 
in total and yeah yeah then we'll divvy up i got you Mm -hmm. um yeah i know we had talked i forgot that conversation we had a fence discussion with um with father because father offered to do it for you all you have to do is go back to father's place and father would take care of it for you if you'd prefer i'm gonna roll intelligence like what what do i think i'm gonna do better you know Mm -hmm. Uh, i rolled a nine you know you'll lose more if you go to father's fence because father's fence Mm -hmm. so uh you'd probably make money but your personal belief in that of gregor when you talked about before was that you know it's better to get out of town Mm -hmm. break it off you don't want to screw over mother uh or father i'm sorry father Uh, we keep saying mother yeah father um, uh, no, of course not. Um, but I'm, uh, well, I'm, just, I mean, just, I'm just wondering how hard would it be to sell something so hot and quite clearly stolen uh, versus Om, no, Om knows a person. Om's and, got a person. Okay, Om, and, and that's re- part of the reason why she was so essential. She, you know, she can she's good enough to get you out of the city. Okay, um, and and um, and the thing is, she's been struggling against the prince for a while, so. She's actually kind of already wanted here as well. Well, but yeah, she still I mean, comes in and sounds. Sounds like an obvious decision, then. Yep. Like no, nah, we're gonna, we're going to take this show on the road. We're gonna. The only gonna, difference now is you have all of these. You have this entourage who all wants to come with you. Well, and um, and that's okay. I, like as long yeah. as we can set it up in a fashion. You know, I don't care if the teamsters want to split up so that one teamster is with Am um, and us on her wagon and mm-hmm. one of them follows behind, you know, and meets up with us later so that it doesn't look obvious. Like whatever, you know. I mean, at this point he's more concerned about his own safety getting out of the city because because he'll get killed for this. Oh, oh, oh yes, you're pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want to die. So that's well, especially if they're right on what the book is, um you really don't want to run into Xantos again, you think? Yeah. Um, so let's get let's get it let's get out of here. <clears throat> okay. So, I, a little up. I, as you guys get going, roll your alertness. Oh mm, boy. Mm, nine, pretty good. Anything in a sin- single digit is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Is that, was it good enough? <laughs> Looks clear. <laughs> Looks clear. <laughs> Looks clear. <laughs> uh, well, it's not always for the moment at which it happens. Sometimes I'm, I'm storing them up for the future. Okay. <laughs> okay. And uh, so what happens is you come down, or you guys actually start exiting out. Uh, she has a different wagon now. Mm-hmm. Um, like she dropped off the old wagon, got a new wagon, mm-hmm. which is probably a good idea. And... And, and, and essentially, there's a false bottom in the wagon, and, and she's trying to usher you guys of into course. there. Uh, there's not a, 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 quite enough space to comfortably be in there, but yeah, you can yeah. all kind of fit in there. And uh, and so um, during the chaos, you actually kind of notice um, one, of, one of the Shiftarian dudes drops a coin like literally you see him kind of pulling it out and just sort of dropping it behind him quite purposefully. It, it looks that way. It's like his hand went to his purse, a coin came out and he, he dropped it. Is there any way that I can get it sneakily? Uh, you can try. I, I, I mean, as people are getting ushered in, you know, roll your stealth to see if you can sort of, or roll your slide of hand to see really if you can sort of make that quick swoop at it. Uh, 13. Okay. You kind of did it as he was going in. Oh, uh, like, like you know, it's like one of the other teamsters saw you. He didn't. He, he just kind of, kind of looked down, and he he, he kind of started to move because he saw the coin on the ground. Mm-hmm. But when you got it, he just kind of stopped and just got into the wagon. Mm-hmm. You get in, and there's like an X sort of carved into the back of the coin as you pick it up. And sort of quickly. This is one of the teamsters who dropped one it. One of the teamsters. This was, and the other one noticed me picking it up. And he, he, he. If anything, you saw he kind of like saw the coin too, and was gonna <laughs> was gonna grab it too. Okay, was gonna grab it. Uh, he didn't see the other guy drop it, but he saw you move towards the coin, and he kind of followed. It was like, yeah, like he went. To, he was like, gonna grab it, but like, ah, him, that guy beat, him beat to me it. to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
the thing that I'm wondering is it, it, if this wasn't done quite. I'm gonna. I, I get this, but I don't know if Marcus would. So I'm gonna roll my intelligence on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, eleven. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry. No. Can I add today? Yeah, eleven. Um, so you tell me if he's savvy enough off of that roll to he's, come he's up. He's savvy with this. enough because this is probably kind of obvious what's happening here. Well. My first thought, and this isn't the one that I wanted, my, but Michael's first thought was, it's a signal to somebody. M- my second thought, and this is the one that Marcus might not be smart enough to have, is, did he drop it quite obviously, knowing that I would see it and knowing that I would pick it up as a means to mark me? Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm thinking, and I don't know if you will grant Marcus that knowledge. Um. Marcus has a little paranoid streak. Like, oh, that's right. right. I forgot he does have a little bit of paranoia in him. So, so it wouldn't be too far off the mark. So, for him so to think it's this. obviously a betrayal of some form. Mm-hmm. And either way you wish to take that, I'll let you go because you didn't really uh, roll well enough to get too much help. But I mean, okay. obviously, this guy is trying to set you guys up. You're just not quite sure how. Okay. Um. If I can share this with Gregor. Let him know. Like, if, if there's a way out on the sly, I can be like, hey, look, this is what just uh, happened. At, show. at this point, you probably have to say some words to get it out. Um, well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if we can have a little hushed tone conversation mm-hmm. where others, like, we step away for it. Like, are, where, where are we? What are we doing? Are like, we in a market You're, like, area? in a back alley on on some street in, in Bedrakis. You're still not exactly sure. It's a part of the city you're not familiar with. Um or super familiar with. So you're nowhere close to where you normally would be. Right, right. Uh, so anyone who sees you, you know, which <clears throat> where you're at would be very unlikely. Um, but uh, you could pull him off to the side as people are getting into the wagon. Okay. So, like, pull him off to the and side. And the guy who dropped it is already in there, so. All right. P- p- pull him off to the side and just, be, and just, like, show him the coin the x off and ask him, like, you know, does this mean anything to you? Well, if I didn't know better, I think he was trying to let someone know where we were. Should I keep this or should I get rid? Get, should I get rid of it? Like, well, if he's trying to let someone know where we are, um, then I probably wouldn't leave it because then, if they find it, they're going to know we were here. Oh, well, I know, but I mean, I can hide it. I can, you know, or I can take it. You know, like. Is it a bad idea for me to have this? Everyone out of the wagon. Who says that? Gregor. Now, hold on. Oh, God. Okay. Which one dropped it? These guys are, like, way bigger than both of us. Mm Mm-hmm. You dropped this and flip it to him. Oh, I'm sorry. And you see, you put it into his pouch. What are you sorry for? Oh, I, I didn't know I dropped a coin. Thank you yes, for you, finding it. Yes, you did know you dropped a coin. You did it very much on purpose. And you notice, like, Gaius and Nero are kind of looking at Commodus, who's the person you're talking to. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of like, like, they're looking suspiciously at him. Look, we got out of this clean. We still have an opportunity for everyone to get what they want out of this and get away safe. Let's stick to the plan. Merely an accident. I'll leave it in here and we'll just let it go as that. We both know it wasn't an accident. Why did you do it? Hmm? <laughs> that always cracks me up. That is a Jeff- Jeffrey thing. That hmm? that reaction right there. You've done that so many times where someone calls a character on a thing and you'll be like, hmm? <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm always, oh, that always means trouble. <laughs> Listen, I, I assure you I would have not dropped a coin on purpose. It was merely an accident. Why don't we all get in the wagon and pretend like this didn't happen? And he's kind of looking down and a somewhat menacing way at you, but not very effectively. Look over at the other two, kind of. They're kind of looking at him. 
And finally, Gaius is like... I'm waiting for one of them just to stab him. Like, I'm tempted to stab him. <laughs> like, I'm very tempted to just stab Ga- him. Gaius looks at him and is like, that wasn't part of the plan. Who paid you to drop the coin? I don't know what you guys are talking about. Finally, uh, How? Nero stabs him into the back. <laughs> Gaius pulls out his dagger and starts to stab him. And like, we don't have time for this. Quickly, quickly look around. Just make sure nobody's nobody sees what's up. Luckily, you're in a sort of a tucked away part of the city. Um, uh, well, there are actually many parts that are tucked away, but this is with the wagon, all the activities on the other side of the wagon. Uh, Nero grabs the guy's mouth. The guy tries to bite him, but Nero just kind of lets him bite him. And, right. and Gaius and, and Nero and they, they just, just stab just shank, him. They shank yeah. the heck out of him. Shank the heck out of him. All right. So obviously he drops a, a, like point, like, are we taking this with mm-hmm. us or are we leaving this here? Leave it. Okay. I start taking his his money and his whatever, anything useful on him I'm taking. Well, uh, actually, you, you would probably have to be quicker, and they're on top of him. Uh, Gaius lifted the pouch as ah. they got back up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to see if I can beat him to it. If I roll real good, because that is, I didn't want to interrupt what you were saying. I did roll a seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you just don't have the... You, you're not on top of the guy stabbing. Fair enough. So you're not fair <clears throat> enough. But they do, what they do is they do drag him back in to the, uh, to the, uh, what do you call that? Like an alcove? Doors. Well, you guys were sort of like underneath a building and you kind of came up those flip doors mm-hmm. into like a, a, a cellar area. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what you would call those, uh, but you know what I mean? The hatch, yeah, yeah. hatchway. Like a hatch door. Yeah. And they like just sort of kick his body down there. And start kicking kind of dirt over the copious amounts of blood. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that it will prevent it, but you know, yeah, yeah. it might help a little bit. Yeah, so and, uh, help with that effort and get moving. And like, we should really get going. I don't know if he's left any more of these around the city. W- what is this about? There was an X on it. Like, do you know who the, who who else? I, I don't knows know what's who going he's on? talking to, but someone's paid him to leave a breadcrumb trail. It's probably not the major. We'd probably be dead already. Um, <laughs> it's also it's also it also seems really stupid to do it on a coin, which anybody would pick up if they saw it. Which anyone would pick up if they saw it. That is correct. Okay. He was not the smartest guy in the world. Let's, which might be the reason why we haven't been caught yet, too. I don't know. Let's get out. Um, so you guys sort of hop in to the wagon, start rolling along, uh, cruise. You uh, you you get to the gate. Uh, Am is talking back and forth to, to someone at the gate. Um, this is obviously a smaller gate. You're in a smaller wagon, not in a grain wagon. Oh, it's not, not the exit, grain gate? Not the grain gate. Um, so you're exiting a different, through a different area. And and finally, after about an, a half hour, she kind of comes and she kind of knocks. And she's like, if you guys want to get out, you can just push up. It'll open up the bottom of the wagon. And so some of the people open it up and you have sort of a little bit deeper wagon mm. that you can kind of sit in. Are we, uh, are, so we have exited we're we're out and now she's, you incur- are she's encouraging us to come, to come out. Out of the city. <clears throat> well, I just, I figured we'd probably want to go a little ways outside of the city before we. A half hour by wagon. Okay. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. And, um. So, so, but you guys get open air at least. And, you know, this isn't the day of helicopters. So uh, that's one nice uh-huh. thing. Uh, no drones following us. So we got no. Uh, there's a flock of crows, but that, same that's probably thing, nothing. Same thing. <laughs> I mean, you see flocks of crows everywhere. And, and everywhere a lot these days. <laughs> I know. It's like they always seem to land on the tree right across from us. <laughs> um, but you guys, you, you guys travel for several hours. Uh, you get up to actually the coastline, um, and there is actually like a boat there, like a, a long boat just sort of parked there, and a couple sailors sitting sitting right at there, and Om kind of waves. Um, I'm just concerned, like, what is stopping? Uh... And when I say a long boat, I don't mean like, like a Norse longboat. This is like a shuttle from a bigger yeah, boat. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And you actually see the bigger boat out into the water. Yeah. 
Um, I'm 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 feeling a little uh, concerned about uh, <laughs> their survival because if anyone finds out what we have, they mm-hmm. I would imagine they just as soon kill us and take it. So mm-hmm. so they have to. We have to be very cool, like 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 we got nothing. <laughs> mm. I mean, really, Commodus and the other. What's the other? What's the other dude's name? Uh, well, Commodus is dead. Oh, Commodus Gaius is the one we killed. And Nero. Gaius and Nero. Gaius and Nero could straight up kill us. And But I think there's a little bit of honor among thieves in that mother, father, rather, you know. Well, you figure if father had ordered it, you guys would probably be, been attacked already. Right, uh, right. So I'm just trusting that, you know, upon father's orders, you know, she's running, running business straight. Mm-hmm. So... So they they've been sitting there relatively calm. Yeah, and you're pretty sure if if father had planted and to say you don't even think she was who he was trying to communicate with because hmm. the other two would have been like shut up. He's right. Nothing's going on here. Let's move. Right, on. right. And they wouldn't have stabbed the crap out of him. <laughs> There's that <Yeah>. too. <laughs> and so you guys uh get going. Uh the only thing I actually know the, the axe would be back at the house but that Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now you guys uh, want to get, uh, uh, she's going up to this, like, it's literally a boat with some sailors for you guys to get on. Mm-hmm. And she's, she kind of takes, she cuts the horses loose and, and starts to get on the thing. And the sailors seem like this is perfectly natural that, you know, a wagon would come up and, you know, people will start getting on the boat because mm. obviously this is part of her exit strategy. Right, right. It's too bad about the horses in the wagon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't think she paid for those anyway? <laughs> yeah, but still a nice smuggling wagon is always useful. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and you guys get out to the boat these aren't, don't think of like galleys from like the middle ages. These are nice, like round tubs that just kind of float down the current. They can be rowed if necessary, but um, or, or, aren't super effective going against the, the current. Um, if the wind's against you, you're done. So um, you guys set sail. Uh, you know, a few days out at sea, you uh, you sort of come up to this area where you see Literally, like it looks like a castle being built on a small island into a harbor um, where it passes both sides. And the master city of what you think is Klein Forest sort of stretching up the hill towards the high hill, which is why it's Klein Forest. It's high hill, um, high wall. Um, part of it's because of the way the wall goes to the sea is very large. So you can actually like literally see up the city as you kind of sail past this a uh, castle being constructed out of stone into this harbor. You'll see this massive city. I mean, you don't, it doesn't make sense to your brain. You've never seen anything like this large before. Like mm-hmm. you don't know how many times Bedrakis could fit in this city. It's like, it just looks immense. Mm-hmm. And the way it goes up the hill probably adds to sort of the intimidation factor of like, Oh my God, this place is huge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And you guys land into the custom dock, which you really don't know what that is. But uh, you see there's a bunch of uh, soldiers around, and you guys just kind of get off the boat, escorted by some of the sailors into a, a warehouse. Um, and um, there's a guy, obviously a military uniform, sitting there, uh, who's like, ah, ah c- c- come on in. I heard you guys got something kind of nice here, huh? Let's take a look. This is her fence. You're guessing. You thought it was going to be in the city of Lubble, but you're obviously not in Lubble. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everyone hears stories of, of Clam Forest, which is why you kind of know it going in there. Mm. Uh, but um, this is obviously not. Is that, I'm sorry about the redirection, but um, the uh, the Prince of uh, Bedrakis seems to be in quite a stir after your guys' recent activity. So we had to kind of sail you south and meet you down here. And, like, let's see the goods. And uh, you and Gregor sort of present. Well, I was going to say, the, look at look at Om um, for confirmation that this is cool. Oh, she shakes her head like this is her guy. Okay. And at this point, 
you know, it's kind of hard to go anywhere else. Well, right, but, you know. But this is the honor mug thieves part of the story, right? Right. <laughs> and, uh, Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 you bring it out and he spins and, and like his eyes get big like this is a lot of jewels hmm. he's like i don't have anywhere near enough money on me he's like i, I got the money um but we're what we're gonna have to do uh i'll give you some bars here now just some bars of silver or uh, um and you guys can just have that uh, as a down payment, we'll keep them here. If you want to leave someone here, you can. Um, but it's going to take me 24 hours to get enough money brought to this location to pay you guys for this. So look, and look at Nero and, uh, they just kind of like sit down like, well, we're not going to exactly. Yeah. Actually, Gregor sits down, um, leaves. <laughs> she she seems to trust them, but, uh, um, yeah. No one else appears to be making a move towards the door, and then they're just sitting there. Okay. Well, and um, I, I guess we're going to be hanging out for a while. They actually bring out like like ten bars of uh, of silver, which to, to, to put that roughly would be about like, uh, you know, think about like ten thousand gold pieces. Yeah, like this you is know? an insane amount of, of of money. It's an insane amount of money, and literally, obviously, you can get the silver put into any form you want to. Mm. Um, or you can go and, and they'll give you coins for it, but it's about a thousand gold coins a bar. Um, Jeez. This is way, way more than he was expecting. Way more than he was expecting. And, and you know that a uh, fence is not paying you anywhere near what he's going to get for it. Um, right. Right. But he has to pay you a fair amount. It gets out that, that he, un, you know, undersells people and it, it's bad for his business. Right. Um, Here's uh, I'm trying to think of what. Well, how much of this of this cut is going to end up as Marcus's? Because we got to pay father. Uh, What's his name? Bruno. Mm-hmm. Bruno. Um. And she obviously brokered deals. You know, everyone's getting a little piece of the action. So how much is going to end up in in um, Marcus's pocket? Two silver coins. Two. Come on. <laughs> come on. He's got to do better than that. Um, let's see, because I think you ended up splitting 50, 50 with, I, I don't remember. I what, think it was like 40, 60, I think. With father. With father. I know that, I don't think it was 50, 50. Um, and everyone else got a share. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of, oh gosh, I don't, let me see, let me see if I wrote it down. Maybe I wrote, maybe it's, I wrote it down. It's not super important. Uh. No? Okay. Well, no. Well, I mean, for, it, for, for, you know, it's story story wise, you're going to get a buttload of gold uh, to sit with. Okay, I think I, I think I mean, is this pretty much where we're calling it, or you still got some stuff with to do it, here? This is be, this is going to be where we're going to call it. You know, you know, within it, you know, within a day, the couple more bars come up. You know, you know, the total haul on your guys' end, and you know, he has to break the stuff up to sell it because he can't obviously sell it in its current. Right, right. You know, is is, is twelve bars of silver, so it's like. Um, Twelve thousand uh, gold pieces, which put in like like roughly current American dollars, it's it's probably about one hundred twenty million dollars in today's dollars. <laughs> oh, it, this is a buttload of money. Um, we need we it, like okay. You finish your part, and then I got I got like a a, mm-hmm. a wrap up on the character. Yep, and so essentially you divvy it all up. You know, you know. J- just you know, to uh, make it nice and tidy, you know, we'll say all of the non-father participants end up with about a thousand gold apiece, which is a lot of money, um, in the form of silver bars. Um, so very nice day. Like this is a retireable amount of money, especially if you go live in a nice fishing village somewhere. Hmm. Uh, Om takes hers. And goes by as a horse to go back up to where she's from because Am um, isn't leaving the fight. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Bruno uh, leaves by a ship the next day. Uh, mm-hmm. You're not sure where Bruno goes. And then you guys sit there and, and you're you're talking. Uh, the guys take father's share and they leave. And their share was wrapped up in her share. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was part of the reason, too, uh, that she got more. 
And so she, uh, they take her share and they leave. You assume they're they're going back to pay to pay uh, father. Well, of course. And um, and it's just kind of you and Gregor left on the, you know, you know, in the harbor area, and um, drinking a mai tai, which aren't available in the world, but you guys have enough money, you can buy one. <laughs> and um, you know, sort of sitting down on the harbor, which is really not the place to sit in a city. It's very dangerous. Well, that, well, my thought is that. But it's it's picturesque, so you're doing it. All right. Um, and Gregor looks, he's like, where are you going to spend your money? Well, look, think about this. Like, we can't we can't keep it. Mm-hmm. If if we keep it like this, it's going to get taken. I of mean, course. you know, there's, there's thieves everywhere, after all. <laughs> you can't trust people. <laughs> you can't trust people. I think we buy something. We buy a shop. We, we, we buy a place, we you know, because you can't, you can't steal that. He, he kind of looks up the hill and he's like, yeah. He's like, I think uh, What's, a person could get lost here. That's my thought. And I think this could be the city of opportunities. That's exactly how he's looking at it. Like he, part of him, I mean, he is a thief. And that's all he knows. So mm-hmm. he doesn't necessarily want to stop doing that. But at the same time, he doesn't want to lose what he's gotten. So mm-hmm. he, like, like part of his mind is like, do we do we start our own guild? Do we, I mean, we, <laughs> what we, do can, we, do? we yeah. can create it. We could build a house out of this. We could build mm-hmm. a guild house out of this. You know, like, I mean, really, how much, how much did we end up with? Like a couple bars a piece? Like, a couple bars a piece. And, and you're saying that for. No, I'd, I'd say between the two of you. So, you know, probably like I'd say, you know. I mean, like, it's like twenty million is your take. I mean, between twenty the two of, million dollars, like to, in today's dollars. In today's oh, dollars, yeah. these are these were priceless jewels that you guys. So he never needs. He really doesn't need to do. It. Like he can literally do anything he wants for the rest of his life. Yes, you wouldn't need to do anything again. But Gregor is kind of looking at the city, saying, "This looks to be like a good place to maybe yeah. hide and um, and do whatever we want to at this point." Um, but you have a feeling that it's not going to be legitimate. Well, the the thing is that like the idea of working legitimately never crossed his mind until oh, until right. You don't, you don't think it crossed Gregor's either. Well, until right now, like because mm-hmm. now he's like, well, wait a minute, we don't need to steal anymore. Like we can literally, like we don't need to do anything. Gregor kind of looked confused. I guess so, but I mean, we could do whatever we want. Like, I mean, how? Aren't you tired of 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 needing to hide and wondering where the next meal is coming from? We know exactly where it's coming from. It's coming from right here. Yeah, but what's the? It seems a bit boring. Ah, uh, well, I I think that we can. I think I think that we can pull some pull some entertainment out of this right here too. <laughs> well, I, I think at a minimum we take some time and we hide. You know, and we see where we go from there. But, you know, with this kind of money, you could finance quite a little operation where ourselves aren't necessarily at risk anymore. I agree. I agree. So he holds up his little Mai Tai. Yeah, yeah, I was saying. <laughs> clicks to yours, and the curtain to, closes. To a bright future. Hmm. Did, did we just create crime lords? <laughs> I think we've created new crime, crime lords in, uh, in Highwall. And very young. Very young. I think this is. I think this is how it's gonna go. I think they're gonna buy a place first to live. Like that's first and foremost. That they need. Then they need a front. And I think he'll maybe he'll start because here's the problem. The problem is they don't know enough. Like if you were to drop twenty million dollars in my lap, I would know exactly what to do with it. They don't know what to do with that kind of money other than we can't have it physically because someone will steal it. Like, cause so now, so I think, I think there would be some, I think that the process, as long as they can get a physical place and they could like pay someone that they make like a safe or something. Like, so they have a, the stash of whatever they got, but I think he'd spend a lot of it to secure keeping that fortune in, in things like buildings and investments well, I'm thinking boats too. Like, you know, he's like, "Why not? Why don't we buy a couple of boats?" You know, start shipping things, like <clears throat> move things around, like like Am is doing, but on a bigger scale, smuggling. Get him, get in, get in bed with this guy at at the port. 
Yeah. So my thought is that he would he would because he doesn't have the life skills or or, or an occupational skill to <clears throat> be legitimate. I think he would take some time off and then, all right, well, now what do we do? And I think Gregor would just slowly guide, like, well, what if we do this? And it's just going to slowly build a criminal empire is what I, is what I, and he's not going to have a, a hard time with that. Like, that's going to be fine. Yeah. Well, I don't, again, I don't think that he's like, oh, I want to be a shopkeeper. Like, that's, you, you know, what's, uh, what's it? Uh, the work of the, the, the work of man's a sucker, dad. <laughs> Okay, cool. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the conclusion of Marcus and the Jewels of Div Devar. No world builder or real world task today because it's a story episode, but we've got plenty more of those to come. I'm hitting stop. Thank you so much for listening to the World Builders Anvil. We would love it if you would share the World Builders Anvil with two of your friends. And so would they. If they are unfamiliar with podcasts, then you get to introduce them to the wonderful world of podcasting. Take them to Stitcher or iTunes, or best of all, just send them to our website, www.gardul.com. That's G-A-R-D-U-L.com. Now strike while the mithril's hot.